Let me read a sentence or two from the article that you wrote. It's hard to calculate the damage that President Trump's overt racism and almost daily attacks on black and brown people are having on the fabric of our nation. Now, in light of the president's rhetoric, what's the impact of the president's trip, for example, today to El Paso? Well, Wolf, it's good to be with you. Uh, the president's trip to El Paso is a sort of normal thing for a normal president to do. The problem is we don't have a normal president. In normal times, as Vice President Biden reminded us today, the president would be comforting and healing and unifying the nation. Instead, he goes to visit uh, victims in, uh, in Dayton and in, in El Paso and then comes out and attacks the, uh, the mayor and the senators from the states that he visited. He continues to divide us most profoundly along racial lines and to suggest that those who come to this country as immigrants, those who have skin that looks like mine, are somehow less than human. He has likened us to an invasion, an infestation. It uses terms that, 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 uh, that liken us to rodents. This is horrific language. In fact, Wolf, it's the language that I recall uh, as national security advisor and then early in my career is the kind of language that dictators and people who incite violence and genocide have used. So this is really quite dangerous. And a trip to, uh, to visit towns that have been deeply impacted by this kind of violence that has been stoked by hateful rhetoric um, don't solve the fundamental problem, which is that we are a divided society and we need healing and unification from the president of the United States, not pitting us against one another. You, you mentioned uh, former Vice President Biden's very strong speech today. Let me play a little clip of that. Listen to this. How far apart? Are those comments? How far is it from white supremacists and neo Nazis in Charlottesville, Trump's very fine people chanting, You will replace us, to the shooter at the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh saying, We're committing genocide. Jews are committing genocide on his people. I don't think it's that far at all. It's both clear language and in code, this president has fanned the flames of white supremacy in this nation. You agree with that assessment? Absolutely. It's, it's a horrible thing to have to say about the man who is leading the United States and is our current president, but it's absolutely true. Our, our Jake Tapper has uh, been reporting that the White House actually rebuffed efforts by the Department of Homeland Security to make domestic terror threats a greater priority, one source saying the White House had major ideological blinders on how concerning is that who's someone who used to deal with these kinds of issues when you were President Obama's national security advisor? It's deeply concerning, Wolf. We've had the FBI director repeatedly testify that the white supremacist, white nationalist threat uh, is now much more frequent and, uh, and, and likely to occur in this country and, and manifest itself in the form of terrorism than any other form of extremism. And yet the President of the United States and his administration are cutting resources to deal with that threat. Um, it, it's very telling that, uh, you know, I worked in an administration that fought and, and put ISIS on the path to defeat. We now face a, a, a similar kind of threat that left untended could have enormous implications. It's already resulted in the deaths of people uh, in various parts of this country, from Pittsburgh to, to Gilroy, uh, and now to El Paso. And what we need is a president of the United States and an administration in Washington that is prepared to use all of the elements of our power to defeat this threat, just as we have worked to defeat the threat from ISIS and, and the threat from Al Qaeda. Now, they're not eradicated completely, we have to remain vigilant, but what we're doing is leaving our home front, our primary flank, completely untended because we have a president and people in his administration who don't seem so, to care. So, Susan, what should uh, the president, the White House, the administration be doing now to deal with this terror threat emanating from white supremacists? Well, in the first instance, you've you got to stop f flowing fuel on the fire. 
the president is daily throwing fuel on this fire. He can't even for 24 hours after a, sp a speech yesterday in which he, he tried to pretend that he's against hatred and bigotry, uh, hold his fire and act dignified long enough to visit the scenes of these terrible tragedies. We need leadership and steadfastness in the White House of the sort that I'm not even sure this president knows how to deliver. But beyond that, we need the Justice Department and the FBI and our intelligence community and our local law enforcement all fixated on this as an emergingly serious uh, threat to our national security. And we don't have that. And just as we work to uh, combat terrorism abroad, where it threatens our interests, we need to be even more vigilant on the home front where Americans are with increasing frequency are at risk. You, in your article in the New York Times, you say the ramifications internationally of what's happening in the United States right now are enormous and they're not good. Uh, tell us what you have in mind. Well, Wolf, the problem is that as bad as it is inside America's shores at the present, it also has international ramifications. Our allies from Britain to uh, Canada to Germany are questioning and condemning the president's rhetoric when he attacks members of Congress who happen to be uh, women of color. We have dictators around the world to, who find comfort in Washington, who see a fellow trafficker in the repression of minorities in President Trump and gives them license and cover to do the same in their own countries. How can we credibly condemn violence and oppression against the Uyghurs in China or Christians in the Middle East when we have a president who's demeaning and denigrating and targeting minorities in this country? We have a fundamental threat, Wolf, that Americans, I hope, by now are well aware of, which is that Russia is trying to divide us internally and pit Americans against each other, undermine our democracy. And when we have a divided society and a president who traffics in exacerbating those divisions, he is doing the Russians' bidding for them. And it's a very dangerous thing. Our domestic political divisions, Wolf, are arguably our greatest national security challenge at the moment. And what we have in the White House is a president that preys on those divisions, throws salt in the wounds of our most painful historical rifts, uh, and does so to the benefit uh, of our adversaries who want nothing more than to see us divided and weakened from within. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the uh, Fox News uh, personality, Tucker Carlson, says the idea that the country has a problem with white supremacy, uh, in his words, is a hoax, just like the Russia hoax. Uh, what are the ramifications of talk like that? He's a disgrace. And so let's move on. You don't even want to discuss that uh, because there are people who believe I, I, that, who, there I, are people I, out there who, be, who believe those kinds of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, lies. Well, Wolf, let's talk about the lies. Let's not talk about Tucker Carlson. Uh, the, the, the mentality that thinks that we have no problem in this country with white nationalism and white supremacy is, is completely ahistorical and missing uh, the moment that we are living in. Uh, and, you know, we see it manifest on, with extraordinary frequency. Just look at what the killer in El Paso wrote. And look at what the killer in Pittsburgh wrote. One attacked Jews, the other attacked uh, immigrant communities. This kind of hate is very real, and it has got very long and deep historical roots in this country. We deny it at our peril. And I think most Americans are much, much more witting of what is going on. They dismiss that kind of uh, blinders that we see from commentators who think that, that this is not a threat. All they have to do, sadly, is turn on their television sets and see that this is a very real and, in fact, growing problem. Or listen to the Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, the current one appointed uh, by the, uh, the president uh, or Christopher Wray the FBI director, who says this white supremacy terror threat is a huge threat to the country right now that's got to be dealt with in a very serious way.